What's up, y'all? Finally back, back from L.A. Um, shout out to Sharon Barber and the whole team out there. Got me a new situation on the West Coast. Um, but now that I'm back over here, I want to address the million dollars worth of game situation. You know, Gilly went on a rant and made up a whole bunch of stuff about $520 an hour and that I turned it down. But then sometimes he said I was fired, so it was either fired or turned out. I don't know. But either way, uh, there was no such thing as the $520 an hour. Um, the show, not the company, the show is something that we all built together from ground ground up, you know, from episode zero, an episode y'all never even saw before. But um, anyway, I'm going to skip right to the meat and potatoes because, I, you know, like I said in my last post, I turned 40 years old. That means 44 years old. I'm not going to be going back and forth on the Internet telling lies and making up stories about wanting to ride around a car. I'm not here to embarrass him, but I am here to show the truth. So what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to show y'all the contract. And I got receipts on everything I talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show y'all the contract. If y'all want to see the contract, just swipe left. All right, now we are, in, you know, inside my phone. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at the actual contract. You know, Gilly used a lot of trigger words like cop and called in the law in order to make people in the community, uh, you know, upset. But really what it is is that he has a lawyer. I have a lawyer. His lawyer sends a contract to me. I send it to my lawyer. Then my lawyer tells me whether it's some BS. But let's go look at the actual contract. We're going to go inside the email. And this is his lawyer, Bernie Resnick. Seems like a great dude. Um, if y'all need something, you can go to Bernie in Philadelphia. But it says, hi, guys, here's the work for hire agreement for your uh, for your signatures for Devin's work as producer and host of the podcast now it says producer and host um you know so all that sound man stuff is ridiculous but you know it's, it's something to make it sound funny um but when you go down this is the actual pdf uh it says work for hire that's the first red flag i'm not a work for hire i'm a person that was in on the ground floor um then i said thank you send it over to my team now but let's open up this pdf all right, so now let's see what the real price of everything was. Now let's look at this right here. And right here it's going to say, we're going to zoom in, and right here it's going to say that it is $750 per episode. There was that's $750 a week, y'all. You know, it isn't, it's, it's been sensationalized, turned in all that stuff. And $4,500 right here was actually the pay on six episodes um, that we did with Barstool Sports. That's what they're trying to pay me for those six episodes. But in order for me to get paid for those six episodes, I had to sign off. Off on all prior episodes that's the 41 episodes that i did before that where i didn't get paid so in a sense they're giving me 4500 dollars for 48 episodes which brings it to like 90 something bucks per episode so that's why i'm like uh nah man i'm not i'm not i'm not running with that all right, so now let's scroll back up and let's look at what's in the contract as my actual, you know, job. So nature of performance, podcast production and hosting in particular. Job title, producer slash co-host, not sound man. Job task, hosting, audio recording, audio mixing, creation of show graphics, creation of sponsor graphics for, uh, for advertisements. So every day, I mean, like every week, um, Barstool Sports sends over the advertisements. And things we supposed to do and you know a sound man wouldn't even be in on them emails a sound man wouldn't even have a dev at barstoolsports.com email address it's ridiculous but um i do the episode synopsis and write up like when you see um on today's episode a million dollars worth of game gillian wallow i do the time stamp and breaking it all down um you know i do the uh the, the, the upload to barstool sports we do that routine every week so a lot of this stuff is just stuff that's made up and sensationalized to make it be something that is not but then you guys want to hear more of the personal story of why this went just swipe left again so so the real reason why gilly went on that big ass rant on my birthday which was real, real foul dog because you're, you're you're terrible for that because on your birthday i was hanging up decorations for your birthday party but on mine you want to do some goofy stuff like that but that's cool but anyway the real reason why is because i wouldn't sign that contract for the 750 dollars a week and you know he basically told me like you know Dev, you know, don't make me, don't make me replace you, Dev. I'll replace you, nigga. They not here to see you. They here to see me. They here to see me. You know, and he went into that whole rant. He said verbatim, you bring no value to my podcast, Dev. They here to see me. And then when we went our own separate ways, that was it. He didn't get sued or anything like that. What happened was he put out an episode. People didn't like it, and they started going crazy in them comments. And then they went so crazy in them comments, they had to turn the YouTube comments off, and then he couldn't even do a live without people talking about it. Keep swiping. So this was a pride and ego thing. You know what I mean? He was so upset because, you know, I'm a nobody. I'm just like some regular dude from Camden. I don't even fit the normal Camden mode. I'm some regular nerd dude, you see. I collect Transformers, comic books, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um... You know, he was upset that people really wanted to see this nerd dude on this show. And he was upset because he had to face the fact that he told me 
that I brought no value to his podcast and everything like that. He thought that nobody was going to notice that I was there. And that's not how it worked out. People actually started going in for me. And I stayed quiet the whole time. I addressed people on my birthday. You know what I mean? I was quiet. I was ignoring fans. And then finally, I addressed people on my birthday. And I just said, thanks for the support. But he wanted to jump out and do that anyway. Because that's just him. That's his personality. He want to act rude. He want to do dumb stuff. Bro, we 40 years old. You 44 years old. Cut it out, man. But we could talk about this more. You're supposed to be the guy that gives game to other people. You're supposed to be the real. Recognize everybody ain't loyal. But basically, you're telling me that, you know, telling people that I was never your friend, that, uh, you know, I was begging to ride around with you and wallow. That's cool for the comedy part, but just saying that is telling me that you was my fake boy because you know that you told me, we family, Dev. We family. But down that all switches when something don't go your way because you need a bunch of people around you that's just going to say, you know, agree with everything that you do. But it's not like that with me. Um, you couldn't hold the fame over my head. I can, you know, I wasn't famous last year. You know what I'm saying? I'm not famous now. You know what I'm saying? So you can't hold that over my head. You know, uh, being on that podcast doesn't make or break my life, man. You know what my real career is. I'm a designer. I make art, bro. That's what I do. And I do new souls. You know, anybody that want to help out the new souls mission, make sure y'all go to at new souls, Inc. And you see what I do for years, what I really do. That's the real mission. So don't even try that, Gil. Come on, man. Um, the wildest part about this whole thing is when you tried to actually use the fans as crash dummies for you. You had to make a contest where people got to insult me in order to get a job, dog. That's how you you misleading and utilizing your fans in that way. That's crazy, dog. It's the fact that, you know, people are talking about something's missing on the podcast so much that you got to, you you know, they came to see you. Why you can't do the show by yourself? Oh, but you got to find somebody to do it with you. And they got to jump out the window on me, a person that they don't know, in order to get their opportunity. Because you want to play with your followers. You really look at your followers like little slaves you could, like, move around and use as chess pieces. And as long as you throw them a treat here and there, oh, I'll take you to this, I'll do that, they're going to fuck with you. You a manipulator, bro. And you know I know better. I know how you really think. The things you really say. You don't want to do this. I know things. So it's back to business as usual. I'm home. Um, you know, I'll talk to my, you know, my, my, my lawyer, and my manager, and then they'll proceed on my behalf on what I got to do to get compensated for the nine months that I, that I put in. Um, I'm not a fool. <laughs> I'm not a fool. You know, I let them handle the business. I go off and do my own thing. You know, what's meant to be is meant to be. But, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to manipulate the people. People with sound minds that have common sense, they go on rock with me. And they'll follow my journey if they want to follow it. If they don't, then cool. I'll continue to be a designer and do what I do. But we don't got to do all of that type of stuff, man. You you know, you don't, we don't got to play those type of games, man. You live around the corner from me, man. Come on. You don't got, we don't got to play them internet games, man. This is silly. We grown, bro. We 40-something years old. Peace, y'all.